Welcome to Disciples Net Church. We are so glad you've joined us for worship. Feel free to join in with hymns, pray with us, and share in communion. Wherever and whenever you are joining us, God's Spirit and people from all over the world are here with you. So let's prepare our hearts for worship. Our focus for this season of Lent is on stumbling blocks, those obstacles in the path that, if we are not careful and attentive, will trip us up and cause us to fall. Jesus knew how to deal with stumbling blocks. He didn't ignore them, hoping they'd just go away. He faced them. He stepped over and around those stumbling blocks by remembering and keeping God's ways. Pastor Audrey, and I would like to offer the pastoral prayer for today. Holy God, we have many needs. Many of our people lack basic food, shelter, and care. Many have ill health and other concerns. Many of us are burdened not only with health concerns, but a lack of support when we seek healing. We pray for those who are suffering, for our loved ones, for their abundant physical and emotional health and growth. Let us also pray for peace among nations and for repair of relationships 
between peoples of nations, between politicians. May there be a desire to draw alliances between peoples who are willing to solve political issues without violence. Let us pray for all the places where violence has erupted, for those who inflict danger on others. May people be changed into persons of kindness and understanding and desirous of the goodness of God's love. Let us pray for those who have experienced the harsh swings of weather, the destruction of the environment, for restoration and care in the many places of affliction. Let us pray for those who are suffering from physical and emotional trauma. O oh God, comfort those with your presence and your Holy Spirit of love. We give thanks for the many moments of your grace when you, O oh God, have been our protector and our guide. Help us to walk in your light and to be actors of love and justice. We pray in your holy name, and we pray the prayer that Jesus, you taught us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive This passage is from John 3, verses 1 through 17, and it's the story of Nicodemus. Now there was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, 
No one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I have said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you, open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you, to see you high and lift. Shining in the light of your glory Pour out your power and love As we sing holy, holy, holy Open the eyes of my heart, Lord Open the eyes of my heart I want to see you I want to see you Open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you, to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, holy, holy. The story of Jesus talking with Nicodemus is one of my favorites in all of Scripture. And today I'm going to invite you, invite all of us actually, to identify with Nicodemus. Now we are not rulers of the Pharisees. We are not experts in the law. But we're basically ordinary middle class people, most of us are. We're not law experts, but we're respectable citizens. We're school teachers, we're retired, we're business people, we're students, we're mothers, we're fathers, we're householders, and we are believing Christians. Nicodemus woke up in the middle of the night, uneasy, needing something more. Now, every one of us has experienced that, certainly. You wake up in the middle of the night and worry about 
oh, what I, I wish I had said, or some spiritual issue that we deal with, or some crisis that might come into our life tomorrow or sometime soon, we all have that experience of waking up in the middle of the night and being uncomfortable. So Nicodemus feels the need for something more, and he chooses to go to Jesus and ask. He starts out with a compliment. He says, I perceive that you are a wise teacher. And Jesus says, no, 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 don't, don't start like that. Let's just, just ask what you want to ask. And if you'll notice, Nicodemus never actually gets around to asking his question. Jesus says to him, you must be born from above. You must be born from above. Nicodemus didn't know what that meant. Nicodemus wanted to find some alteration, some, some, some tinkering that he could do with his life to make things better. And Jesus basically said, no, your life has to change completely, totally, totally radically. We want born from above. We use the word heaven. We want heaven to be a place that we think about. We want it to be a place that we can live forever someday when the time comes, at some future time. No, Jesus says to Nicodemus, you must be born again. Now the kingdom of heaven is within you. It is here and it is now. Most of us Christians think that being faithful means reserving or setting aside in our life the right and proper place for worship, for prayer, for our understanding of God, for our, our, our giving of money, our time. We want to compartmentalize this. We want to fit our religion into its proper place. It's really a tough question. What is the right and proper place of our Christian faith in our daily lives? Honest people, caring people, ask that question all the time. And when Jesus says, you must be born from above, we probably think that he's telling Nicodemus, first place is the right and proper place in your life for your Christian faith. But no. First place is wrong. That's not the right answer. Not what Jesus said. That's not what being born again actually means. You see, the whole question is actually not quite right. We cannot fit our Christian faith into its proper place in our lives. Jesus is telling us, if we are still identifying with Nicodemus, that faith is actually the overarching superstructure, the umbrella under which everything else in life fits. Nicodemus wanted to tinker. He wanted to fix things a bit. He wanted to tune up. He was, he was restless. He thought maybe his life could be solved by maybe something as simple as do what I do now, only try harder and do it better. Well, Normally, that would all be good advice. But Nicodemus' life is actually broken. He did not recognize it. He knew something was not quite right, or we, he would not have been there seeking God at all. Well, we want to tinker. We want to make adjustments. But we are not talking about that here. We are talking about radical change. We are talking about our Christian life, faith, dominating all of life, eating, shopping, house cleaning, child rearing, our political attitudes, how we spend our money, the politics of our community and nation, how we behave toward people of different nations and different races, how we behave toward gay and lesbian people, radical change. When Jesus tells Nicodemus that he is to be born from above, 
he is talking about complete, radical transformation. Not pigeonholing, not tinkering, not making adjustments. Partial commitment simply will not work. It is a grave thing, indeed, to meet Jesus Christ, as Nicodemus learned that day, and as I hope we can learn as well. We can never again be what we were before. No one can push past Christ and pretend not to see him. Each must stand, listen, make up his mind. We started by asking ourselves to identify with Nicodemus, and I want to continue that now as we close. I suggest to you that Nicodemus' story is our story. We do not know the outcome of that evening meeting, but we do know that Nicodemus comes back into the story of Jesus two more times. In chapter 7 of John, Nicodemus stands courageously before the Sanhedrin, defending Jesus. And in chapter 19 of John, Nicodemus joins Joseph of Arimathea in ministering to Jesus Christ's body and burying him. So no, we do not know the details. We do not know the where or the when. But at some point, this ruler, this scholar, this man who really has, is so much like you and me, at some point, he did come to know that God so loved Nicodemus that God gave the only son that he might have eternal life. May the story be our story. Amen. Spirit of the living God, for It's hard to know what was on Jesus' mind that last supper with his disciples in the upper room. What it does seem, though, is that he had a great sense of what he wanted to leave as a lasting message for his disciples, a lasting thought to guide them through the days ahead, through the years ahead. That lasting message seemed to be one of how in brokenness, how in Jesus' own broken body, there could be wholeness that in breaking of the bread and sharing that broken bread, the whole body of Christ continues to grow and is continued to spread around the world. This is the place of new life, of celebrating new life. We invite you to come now and share with us as we take of this bread and drink of this cup. All one people connected in time and place and all eternity through Jesus Christ our Lord and the love of God. Won't you pray with me? Dear God, we come to you now confessing our sins and wrongdoings and humbled that you would call us to this table, 
this special place. We thank you of the new life that comes through the taking of this bread, the drinking of the cup, and we thank you for those things. And the Son, your Son Jesus Christ, who came to teach us about your love. And help us learn how to connect and be together as your people in this world. Thank you now for this cup and this bread. Thank you now for being with us. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. For it was in that last supper with his disciples that Jesus took a loaf of bread while they were eating. And after he had blessed it, he broke it and said to them, This is my body that is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after they had finished eating and said to them, This cup is the new covenant of my blood poured out for you. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat of this bread and drink of this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Won't you come? As we close, I would suggest that part of the issue for Nicodemus as a stumbling block was his need for stability, his need to compartmentalize, his need to get everything organized and properly associated. And in making that effort, he became unstable and became unable to organize everything in his life. May we remove that kind of stone from our own lives. As we do this, as we remove the stone of instability from our life, that stone will lose its power to make us stumble, and we'll be able to walk the path of faith with confidence. Amen.